Indiana. Can I go first? Because I've got to run downstairs and grab the ants. The ants we ordered died. Remember how it's too hot for the ant farm? They just got dropped off. I just saw it on the ring cam. It takes me like two minutes when Tom's talking about Indiana. Let me let me go first on in Indiana because I don't want them to die because our, the way, the way our friend are Oregon's, it's going it's going to sit there and bake and be Save really hot. Save the ants. ants. Save the ants. All right, all right, <laughs> all right. Go Indiana. I am over on Indiana. Um, I basically the way I priced this was: what if you took a like a, a badass Sun Belt team and dropped it into the Big Ten West? Because that's essentially what Indiana's schedule is, and that's essentially what their roster is. Okay, you get Curtis Rourke, who's healthy. They did lose one of their really good left guards, so that's a problem. Um, but ultimately, like, how good would like plussed up JMU have done with this schedule? Mm-hmm. And I think pretty well. Like, I think Indiana's a better team than Purdue. I think it's. I, I don't know that it's like a bottom three team in the Big Ten, and that's not saying it's great. I just have negative opinions on, on some of these other teams. Signetti is a pretty decent proven coach. I think Tino Sinceri actually has done a really good job at quarterbacks if you look at his track record. So uh, I'm kind of bullish on Indiana being able to make a bowl game here. And I'll be right back with some ants. Save the ants. ants. Save, Save the, the ants. ants. I am, I hope those ants die, but I am also on the over for Indiana here. I'm not betting it, but I mean, it's, it's mostly schedule related. Like, the, FIU, Western Illinois, Charlotte, those are three non-conference games all at home that the Hoosiers should win. At UCLA is your first Big Ten game. That's, I mean, UCLA, we'll we'll get to that tomorrow, but UCLA could be the worst team in the league this year. So to me, that's not what I'm, I'm not giving Indiana that win, but that's a winnable game. Maryland at home, Northwestern on the lakefront. God knows what that game's going to look like. You get like Nebraska will be tough. Washington, Michigan, and Ohio State, they're all there. But kind of like I was talking about with Illinois, every other game you look at on the schedule, I think Indiana can win. My concern is, or at least where I think things could go wrong, like this whole team is a bunch of transfers. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I mean? So especially early in the season, when you've got a lot of winnable games, maybe the unfamiliarity kind of kept, sneaks up and bites you in the ass at some point and costs you a game. But I think as the year goes on, this team will get better because they'll be more familiar with one another. And that's when the schedule gets tougher. But I also, I really like Curtis work as a quarterback. I've been high on him for a few years as a big Ohio booster myself. And there's a lot of good players that he brought in from James Madison with him. So there is familiarity there. So I do think this team is good enough to where the floor will not be like there's no rock bottom in this team. Like they're going to be competitive most weeks at a minimum. I'm I'm kind of right on this. If, if for you know forced to make a call like we are right here, I'll lean to the over because of coaching. I just think that Kurt Signetti is a really, 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 really good coach. And like you mentioned, when you bring over, um, I mean Elijah Elijah Surratt's awesome. You know, like there's there are players from James Madison. And then on the defensive side where he brought over almost the entire staff, like there are players from James Madison that you remember being great during this, you know, run last year and and the way that they've been able to hit the ground running at the FBS level such that, yeah, I I could see this all working out, but man, they play some of the big question mark teams for me. Like I think uh, Tom just, but Tom just mentioned we have our UCLA range of outcomes is massive. Could, could be the worst team in the Big Ten. Could be a pretty competitive team that's going to be a tough out, especially when you got to go play them on the road. I think Jonathan Smith is a good coach. I think Aiden Childs is a good quarterback. Michigan State's lost a ton. The difference between in Michigan State being the dead last team and Michigan State being like, what, 12th, 13th, you know, somewhere around there, that could be the difference in whether Indiana goes over or under. Washington could be anything. And so with all these mystery teams on the schedule, I find it a little tough to go with super confidence. My, uh, my chip gave it right at 5.5, three wins, four losses, five toss ups. And so I'll go, uh, I'll go I'll lean slightly to the over on this one for Indiana, but, uh, but no major edge for me. The big tiebreaker again, being the, uh, the coaching here. Did the ants make it or were they soft? So I'm actually going to have to dash out again because it's actually a, I got the notification. I grabbed the box. Wrong box. I think they put the ants in the mailbox. Uh, which is black and the cast oh. iron. So like, it's going to be really, really hot and bacon in there. So when we hit break, whenever they tell you about the South Park and the Wagovi uh, weight loss South Park episode or whatever we have today to promo, I'm going to be dashing out there. How many games are going to win this fall? 